So y'all in the pods and y'all talk about all the things, but some of the things you aren't talking about are your kinks. Are y'all not having the conversations about fetishes, um, sexual intimacy, the things that you like, the things you desire, the things that you've tried? Are, are we avoiding those conversations? Because honestly, listening to Steven, nothing's a surprise. <laughs> What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? I am your girl, Talisa Ray, self-love advocate and wife coach. If it's your first time visiting, baby, you in for a treat, because today, I know I shouldn't be, like, chuckling a little bit, but I am, because how sway? How you didn't pick up on the cues? Anyway, we are reviewing season seven, episode number eight, Dirty Laundry. You know, I thought we was going to be beefing. I thought Dirty Laundry was going to be about Nick and Hannah and all her, her uh, very militant expectations. They're not necessarily militant. That's not fair. But very like, this is how it is. This is how it's going to be expectations. But baby, no, the Dirty Laundry is about Monica and Steven. Okay, so let's just go easy and start with Ashley and Tyler. I wrote down, like, what will their first disagreement look like for me it feels like it's gonna look like love and kindness for me it looks like understanding and maybe somebody will get upset but i i feel like tyler will be the one to say hey babe let's fix it hey babe how do we move forward like i i, I still i still i still i gotta do i gotta figure out how to do like a reaction video because i was like with his dad and with his glasses on. Ashley's dad is fine when he took the glasses off. I was like, oh, he was real fine when he was younger. Cause he's, you know, he's probably in his sixties maybe. I might be pushing it, I don't know. But baby, listen. Um, I rolled down because of course this is their first meeting or this is when Tyler meets her dad and he talks about, he always talks about how she makes him feel safe and allows him to be vulnerable. And I really believe that emotional safety is huge for men. Like feeling that they can share with you um, is really huge for men, for people in general. But I think even more so for men because there is a stigma that they have to be so hard and tough and they can't have these emotions and be sensitive and experience life as a human like the rest of us do like they should go into a closet and cry i don't like that i really would like you to feel safe enough with me um i think i told you that before and if you're not feeling safe with me if i don't make you feel safe if i don't feel like you're someone that you can really just truly be your full and authentic true self with um then i'm not for you right it, yeah anyway let's keep going um i wrote down he he, as in Tyler, is chivalrous. We didn't know that he was opening doors and carrying bags because, like she said, the people in her age bracket, except for my son, baby, my son is 28 and he is chivalrous, um, they don't necessarily do those things, right? Like, at least that's what I hear. I'm 48. I'm not dating nobody my child's age or close to it, okay? I told you 10 years, okay? But I think I'm going to go out on a date with a guy that's younger. I got to see how old this guy is. I think he's younger than the, the 10 years. Hmm. I'm going to have to look. Maybe I'll come back and tell y'all on another day. And then I wrote down, he's a real dad. Because he was like, this is my one and only daughter. He said it at the beginning when he was smiling. He was smiling. He was good. He said that I trust my daughter's decisions. And she has chosen you. But I'm a real dad. Meaning, try her and find out. You're going to F-A-F-O. <laughs> you are going to F-A and F-O if you hurt my baby girl. She is my one and only daughter. I wrote down, he's a real dad. He wasn't pretending. He didn't do none of that. He, he's a real dad. Um, oh, Monica and Steven are my very next people. We're going to come back to them, baby, because they, they got a lot. So does Nick and Hannah, but they easier for me than... Monica and Steven. So, Nick and Hannah. Nick and Hannah. Um, Nick still lives with his parents. He stays in his parents' basement. He's 28. How y'all feel about that? Y'all feel the way? Y'all feel like he's not responsible because he lived with his parents and he let his parents pay his insurance and his cell phone and all of those things? 
Let me know down below in the comments because my baby is always welcome, both of them. I am a soft place to land for them, and I will never pass judgment on them. They can always come here but when they are here they definitely have responsibilities they definitely know how to uh, navigate this life and honestly while they're here and I think about my oldest son when he comes and he stays and his you know right now he's here he don't want to be here baby he don't want to be here I say I'm gonna convert them back to an ADU he don't want that he don't want to be here um and I just really don't think that Especially I live in California. I don't think that it's a problem if your child comes and lives with you Because your family dynamic is different than his don't be mad and don't judge him now I get that he needs to grow up in some instances, but you aren't making it a safe space for him to be able to trust you um, in the process it feels like she's constantly like judging him and his decisions and it's not doing it in love and kindness. It's not saying, well, let me care for him. Like, I don't want you to mama him, but I want you to give him the grace and the opportunity to learn these things. And if there's stuff that you have, you want to share, like share that. But it feels low key like she's underhandedly belittling him for the things that he doesn't know. Like, it's constant digs. I think I said that. And then I wrote down, she's a little anal, a little OCD. Um, cause she has, uh, I, I, I get her setting clear expectations. You know, I love to set clear expectations, but ma'am, you're telling him what to do. You're saying you're going to do this. You're going to do that. It's not a conversation. And Oh, you only vacuum once every two weeks. Now I don't agree with that. But I think that her doing it every day is probably a bit OCD. That's where the OCD comes from because it gets so dirty. I don't have hardwood floors, so I don't know. But I still don't see like me sweeping my entire floor once every day. The kitchen, yes. But like in the living room, I don't know. Like I told y'all last episode, don't judge me, judge your mama. This is my house, not yours. <laughs> Anyway, you know, she's all like, so are you going to let your parents continue to pay your bills? Continue to pay your insurance? Are you getting on the insurance with me? Are you getting your own phone plan? Because we're going to split everything down the middle. Everything. Bills, rent, all the things. So I guess I'll just have my own phone. Listen, that man will get on that plan if you ask him to. If you if you say, let's, get this, let's do this together. But it's a lot. He he may not have been ready for marriage. He might have thought he was ready for marriage, but he may not be a, a ready ready for marriage. And maybe she ain't either because she don't know how to create a space for him to embrace the things that he does need to change. Okay, so let's talk about Marissa and Ramses. There wasn't much really here. They she, he met her friends, um, and. You could see that they were like a little skeptical, especially the one that was in the military. And they talked about the differences that they have on the concept of military, specifically from the U.S. standpoint. And baby, listen, you now know why. You now know why. Ramses is from Venezuela. That's why his Spanish is so muy perfecto. Um, but maybe not. I mean, is, is that his first language? Nevertheless, he said, I know firsthand what the destruction and the damage looks like for people on the other side of the U.S.'s um, military forces. He is not budging from that. He said what he said. He talked about Palestine. He said what he said. Like, it's not... Um, that's it. I don't know. I was about to say something else, but what was I going to say? He said what he said. And I understand completely, but I also understand Marissa saying that this was part of my life and I am still going to share this part of my life, that this is what your mother did for a very long time. This is who she was, um, though she does not agree with that state of being anymore. And I like that they have found a compromise saying, you know, I think they asked, uh, well, if your child wants to go into the military, then what? And I like that Ramses said, well, I'm going to teach these set of viewpoints that I have. I'm going to show them things from this viewpoint. But 
even if they decide that this is what I'm going to do, it's their life, they have their choices. And I mean, really all we can do is, is instill in values, um, our, in our children, morals, you know what I'm saying? Upstanding character, integrity, and hope, and pray that they make wise decisions for their lives and they consider the things in whole. I don't know, that's all I'm doing. I wanna, I'm raising successful black men who are operating in society who think. Okay, I say it normally differently, but that's who I'm raising. They're gonna be able to make wise decisions, well-rounded decisions, be able to communicate for themselves, like be able to advocate for themselves. And when they can't, here I, hi, here's your mom. Hi, my name is Talisa and I'm Kingston's mom. Hi, my name is Talisa and I'm Royals mom. And Royals 28 and I'm gonna just tell you this, I will still pull up on you <laughs> about these children that I housed and that I have, I have reared like what the girl call them? My crotch fruit. Yes, I will. Okay. Um, I like that how he and both, well, actually how both of them handle the friends in the most kindest, articulate way. And he is, got a boundary he's got a line in the sand and baby I'm not crossing it if you go back to the military I can't be with you it is a hard no and it's not her boundary it's his y'all know boundaries that we create are set for ourselves not for someone else so if I say I have a boundary of uh I don't like people in the military and you decide to go back to the military what am I going to do about the boundary that I set? I can't be like to her you either stay or you go no it's my boundary so I have to say well, this is a hard pass for me. We're at an impasse. I love you, but I'm going to do it from over here and not in a relationship with you. So let's talk about Tim and Alex. I mean, there's so much potential for Tim and Alex. Ah, Alex just seems very set in her ways. She's too young to be set in her ways. But also, Tim is very set too, kind of staunch in his ways. Like, they both are two bulls, locking horns. Like, really. Nevertheless, um, she preps him. The family is in the house. He's on the grill. She preps him, and she's all like, so they don't know that you proposed. But they're going to know in a minute, girl, what is you doing? What is you doing? Um, that they know that they were on, that it was an experiment and da 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 and that we are pick, cho chose each other, but they don't know that you've already proposed and I really want you to be able to talk to my dad, um, separately. Family is huge for her. This actually brought tears to my eyes because she's a daddy's girl and my, the majority of my life, the majority of my life, I was the sunshine in my dad's life, right? Um. Nevertheless, we're going to move on because, hello, my dad's not, um, he's still in this realm. He's still on this side of the earth. He is not transitioned over. Uh, just our relationship, our dynamic looks a little different. And, um, so anyway, I wrote down, she get her sarcasm for her, from her dad. She, her personality, her energy feels like her dad, her mom, I forgot that her mom and her dad have MS. Her dad, you can see visibly that there has been changes in his um, constitution and who he is and his body. Um, where his mom, you don't it, you don't see the effects uh, of MS as it relates today. I wrote down that she values her family's opinion and I'm just wondering, is it going to be to her detriment that Is it going to be to her detriment? Period. No question mark. <laughs> and her, fa her father and Tim have a lot of similarities. And so I'm wondering if, uh, you know, she wants a man like her father. You know, you want someone who loves you. You know, and dads love their daughters. I mean, they love their children. But the relationship normally that a daughter and a dad had, like, that's the first man you've ever loved. You know, like for sons, I'm the first woman my sons have ever loved period point blank so nevertheless uh i loved that he i mean at her request of course 
he asked that to have a conversation with the dad alone and he asked for the, her hand in marriage by reading that letter and that just like I got choked up at the fact that he did that so did dad dad got sensitive and I love that both dads um Ashley's dad and Alex's dad was like I need a moment to gather myself because both of them are from the era of men don't cry but I love the fact that when it came to the baby girls the men had tears in their eyes like I'm I'm giving you my daughter I'm giving you my daughter I'm giving you my daughter um and this is my blessing but I got my eye on you okay and just because her daddy got MS don't mean them two brothers ain't gonna pull up <laughs> they may not look like they're gonna pull up but something in my spirit tells me that them two brothers especially the one that was talking will pull up pull up on me okay like yeah mm -mm. and not in a good way <laughs> Uh, Taylor and Garrett. Taylor, uh, place, I, I guess, is that where they're gonna go and move to? No. <laughs> she wants to go back to San Diego. She wants to come back to San Diego. Mm -hmm. I'm not in San Diego, but I'm in Southern California. If you're new here, you didn't know. Um, she wants to head back to Southern California to raise her children because she loves it here. I mean, it's beautiful in Southern California. And if you've never been to San Diego, it's like a peaceful oasis. Like people who live in San Diego be like, it's nothing to do here. It's everything to do in LA. But San Diego gives you resort vibes. Like you live in a resort town. Like I, that's the best way I can explain it. It is a college town also. So, I mean, you see all the young people and when you go to resorts, you know, the young people be turning up and the old people be relaxing. And that's exactly what it's kind of like. Kind of gives you that kind of vibe, vibe, beautiful beaches. Um, so, uh, I had wrote down, he seems a little bit like teetering, like he's never left Fredericksburg, but he's willing to go for her. Um, but also he wants his children to be in his grand, his parents to be in his children's lives. So it feels like a little bit of a seesaw kind of teetering, but he's all like, I'm really leaning into you. I'm really being fully vulnerable. And if this doesn't work out, I'm going to be hurt. I'm going to be, um, sad about it. Now, uh, let's talk, let's talk about it. Cause that's all I had about them. Like, I feel like I watched a whole episode and it should have been a whole lot, but Monica and Steven, Monica and Steven. Let's talk about Monica and Steven. First and foremost, I had never said this, but he was always saying, I don't, I wouldn't mind being your meat, um, for you to use me like a piece of meat. Tell me to come in and take, like this episode, tell me to come in and take off my clothes. And, ooh, like, he always said that. So for me, I always thought he might have some sub- like some submissive energy, like Dom sub, like he might want a dominatrix like in BDSM and like kinks. And I'm still in the space of why haven't, why didn't you guys have these conversations? Why did you go around conversations that are very important? I mean, then, um, so we don't know what was said. At least I don't know what was said because I just watched episode eight. Are they going to tell us in episode nine? I don't know what was on those text messages, but I'm going to tell you what I think it is. I think it was about a, a lot of butt stuff, a lot of pegging. He said pegging on that couch and that he wasn't against pegging. Now, I'm not here to judge you. I think that you should live the life that you choose according to your desires needs and wants according to what you want for your life but also i feel like you are responsible to make sure that the people who you are interacting with who you plan on marrying who you love and want to spend your life with have clear understanding about who you are as a person it should not be a surprise sitting on the couch looking at your phone um me questioning because you got some as she said very gross graphic messages it should not have been a surprise. He should have given her the opportunity to bow out in those pods. Because there's people that'll do all the things. Like, he's got kinks. There's people that'll do all the things. There's people that are willing to peg you. Like, and that want to be in relationship with you. 
there's a whole kink community and I listen I know I know we're a bunch of black folks over here right and y'all be like oh gross this gross that gross this gross that gross there's a whole community willing to do that consensually okay everywhere and you know I'm sure y'all probably like that's that duh stuff right is it is it I feel like you can do whatever you want as long as there's consent. I know we got this whole P. Diddy thing happening right now and that's something entirely different than what Steven has. But I do believe that Steven, it was his responsibility to share this with Monica because Monica was disgusted by what was said on the very graphic text messages. Do y'all know what they are? I heard that there's a lot of stuff happening on TikTok. Uh, my, my good friend, Ray of Sunshine, Cynthia, who I work with, who I didn't know. I don't know if y'all have watched any other things, but I didn't know that she was a Ray of Sunshine. And we were on the board of directors together as co-event directors. And one day she was like, oh my God, you're Talisa Ray. Like, you don't have your hair red, so I didn't catch it, but you're Talisa Ray. And I kept saying, like, girl, what you mean? Yes. I mean, yeah, like, not recognizing that these two things whatever the tweens should meet the two uh my personal business and professional stuff i didn't i wasn't expecting it nevertheless she said that there was a lot of stuff on tiktok and um if there's stuff about steven and monica i go ahead and let me know you could slide in my dms okay i am talisa ray everywhere even i think on tiktok i might just be talisa ray but put in talisa ray honey i'm gonna come up you're gonna see you're gonna see me you're gonna see me so what? Well, I want to know what's on the text messages. What else did I wrote? Oh, Taylor came and, you know, it's very, like, supportive of her. Because it's over for them. They called it quits. Baby, she was like, I've been supporting you for these last couple of days. Then, mommy, back that money I sent you. Now. He, matter of fact, get your phone out do it right now. He did just that. He did just that. He messed that up. I feel like she messed it up too though. Like, cause they didn't have the conversation. What questions are you asking that are imperative for your success in your relationship? I want to know, let me know down below in the comments. And as much as people say like, you know, he was like, oh, sex isn't really, it's, I don't have to have sex. That's a lie. That's a lie. Something was sparked uh, with that whole butt conversation and the pegging. Like what other fetishes what other kinks do you have and then the follow-up question could you be with someone who has kinks could you be with someone who is into shabari rope who is into impact play who is into like i i, I know the things <laughs> i know the things could you be with someone who like the little little freaky little kinky stuff i want to know okay i am your girl talisa ray thank you so much for watching my review of love is blind season number seven episode number eight we may have to do a live here soon because i do want to know what y'all think and me talking to y'all through this camera and not getting the feedback that i need immediately i need immediate gratification on these questions and then y'all y'all playing because i'm i'm trying to get y'all back in and y'all like oh is she back or not no i'm back i'm back uh, if you're new here, go ahead and click the subscribe button so you can come and kiki with us and have real conversations with us. Click the notification bell so it's, you're alerted that I've uploaded a new video. I'm actually getting ready to start Queen's Court. I know that they, they uh, put them out last week, but I'm going to start. I'm going to start. It's just this has been taking up a lot of my energy. Know that I love you in real life and want every good thing that God has in store for you, even if you don't know what that is for yourself, which includes understanding people's uh kinks <laughs> hugs and kisses and lots of love i will see you on the next review